everyone. A lovely viewer sent me a little package in the mail and I'm so excited. I really thought it would be fun to open this on camera so we can all see what's inside. Thank you very much for sending me this. I'm so excited to see what's in here. So let's get into it. Yay! All right. I've already conveniently <laughs> cut the bag. Obviously that did not come on there, but I'm not going to put my address on there for the moment. <laughs> and also there was one inside, which I've also covered the address on as well. But cute little drawings and pretty sparkly pens. Always makes me happy. All right, so let's get in. Okay. Oh, I think that's it. Yep. Over to one side. I'll open these in a moment. Let's see what's in the envelope. It's quite a bit actually. <laughs> uh, as if assuming I can ever get it out again. Ah, uh, there we go. Oh, look at this. That is so cool. That is gorgeous. What a beautiful artwork. I'm so excited to receive some artwork from someone. I just think that's fantastic. I'm definitely going to have to get a keepsake box or a book to put little artworks like this in because these are just real treasures and I really do appreciate the time and effort it took to do this. And I will just pop that to one side. There's a letter in here. I think I might leave that off camera just because that is someone's personal writing. But it's a very lovely letter on this fabulous soft almost rice paper. I'm not too sure what the paper is, this cottony feel to it, but it's really beautiful writing paper. Let's see what else is in here. Oh, she sent me some cardi papers in a size A7. So there's a few sheets in here. We'll just have a quick little look. Gently pull them out. I always try to avoid handling papers with my fingers because they do get oils on them very quickly. So I, <laughs> this glove's a bit big, but it will do just so I can pick one up and take a look at it. Well, these are really nice. I do have some, I think, somewhere, but I've not ever used them and I'm really curious to do so. So I think I'm going to have to do a little artwork on one of these pieces. <laughs> I mean, they're just lovely. So there's three pieces in here by the looks of things. No, there's four. Oh look, there we go. <laughs> there's one, two, three, and that looks like four. Awesome. I'll have to do some little paintings on those. I haven't done small paintings in ages. I usually do really large ones, so for me it's quite challenging to do a small painting. What's the likelihood that I'm going to ever get that back in the bag on camera? So I think what I might do is just lay them over on the side here. Oh look, how cute are these? There's two of them. Colouring in postcards. Oh, and they're by Faber-Castell. How cool are they? Oh, it's a koala. That one's gorgeous. I really love that. That is so cute. I'm gonna have to colour that one in. And I've also got this one here, which looks like a little, yes, it's a little marine aquarium. That's really cute. They're so cool. I really can't wait to colour these in. You know I'm going to be doing those soon. <laughs> and what else? Oh, one last thing here by the looks of it. Oh, this is a colour chart of all of M. Graham's paints. That's really fantastic. I don't actually have one of these. So I will have to go through and tick off all of the colours that I own so far and then I can see what other ones I can buy. <laughs> And this, I think, is just cardboard backing. Just double check and take that glove off now because I can't actually pick up anything with it. Yeah, I th it kind of looks like it's two pieces, but I think it is actually just a piece of cardboard that's stuck together. Yeah, <laughs> if, it, if it's not, I'm not going to rip that apart on camera <laughs> in case it's just meant to be a piece of cardboard like that. So I think I'll just put that over to one side. And now let's have a look at what's in here because I cannot even wait to show you. I really hope I've got them up the right way because they're actually, they both on either side say lift. So what she did was she'd written on plastic and, and wrapped them in plastic um, top side. And I'm really hoping I've remembered which way they go. So let's open it if I can remember how to. There we go. There's one, and 
and here's the other. <laughs> These are M. Graham paints and they are all colours that I do not have. I can't believe that she sent me these. They are amazing. So I'm just going to move this painting before I get paint on it. That would be devastating. I'm just going to lay them there. So let's take a look at the colors that she sent. Now we were a little concerned and I know she was uh, in sending them because as many of us know, M. Graham paints do not set very well, but these all made it in one piece, which is really exciting and they did not make too much of a mess and she very cleverly put this plastic on, so any mess is just on this little plastic sheet here. So they are not stuck in or anything. This one, I'm probably never going to get those back in, but <laughs> we'll try. <laughs> they actually have magnets on the bottom, so I will need to find a tin where I can stick them in. And they've got the pigment number. This one's Burnt Umber and M. Graham on here. So we have Burnt Umber. Um, this one's Quinacridone Violet. <laughs> I'm already getting it all over myself. Bismuth Yellow. Azo yellow or aureolin if you want, um, yellow ochre, this blue one so pretty, cerulean blue and burnt sienna so that's a really nice palette and then on this one we are going to have, we'll start with the green here, we've got <laughs> sap green Oh, that one's very, look at that one's gone a bit gloopy. This one is quinacridone red. Nice, because I have the quinacridone rose, so that should be interesting to see how they compare with one another. This looks quite a lot like my old arch nemesis. It is, it's cobalt violet. Ah, the paint that I love to hate, or hate to love, whichever way around. I have had troubles with cobalt violets in other brands. If you've seen my core video, you'll see how much fun I had with their cobalt violet. Uh, that one's gone a bit everywhere, of course. At least one of them had to. This one's Thalo Blue, and this will be the green shade because it's um, PB15 column 3. I have Thalo Blue red shade, so that will be another interesting one to compare. Ugh, that one's so sticky. Ah, it's gone everywhere. I'm going to have to glean all this up in a bit. And then we have... Ooh, lamp black, which I can't even hold them because my fingers are so sticky. And the lucky last in here is ultramarine blue. That's always a lovely staple color to have. And I was unable to pick this one up because I think they'd sold out when I was there buying my set of colors. So yes, I think what I might do is actually find a metal tin to put these in because they have magnets on and they will sit a lot better and yeah, <laughs> I'm going to go and wash my hands now before I get sticky all over everything. So here's my current tin of M. Graham paints, which I haven't even swatched out those two in there, but as you can see, these are not going to fit in here, so I'm probably going to have to actually upgrade my tin to a larger one, but for now, there is no way that I can get a tin unless I order one online, and heaven only knows when that would turn up, so for now, I've got a temporary solution, which is this old metal tin, it's an old butterscotch vintage tin that I found ages ago and has been sitting in my collection because these ones have magnets they are going to sit on there quite nicely so what I'll do is I will store these new ones in here for now until such time as I find a better solution I may even end up putting magnets on those and putting them in there I just I'm not too sure yet what I'm going to do but I really want to keep these protected because they are very sticky especially that purple oh yeah I've already got sticky and would you believe I managed to touch the phthalo blue with my finger I accidentally put my finger on it and it's still very very juicy and as anyone who's used phthalo blue knows it is the most staining color so I'm probably going to have a blue fingernail there for a little while <laughs> never mind let's just arrange these in somewhat of a color order Although, of course, that green's kind of extra. 
unless I put that, hang on, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, lucky 13, oh well, it's a, a good year for that, it was my 13th anniversary this year with my husband, so yeah, good number, <laughs> but I am going, I think, to swatch these colours out because I'm really curious to see what they're like. Look, here we go, I found an offcut of watercolour paper which almost fits in there, so I'll cut this down to fit in and I'll just make a little swatch card out of it. I've ruled out a swatch chart. Uh, that one's odd, isn't that the most annoying thing ever? <laughs> Sorry about that! <laughs> but I also have not swatched these two paints, so I'm just really going to quickly swatch them out on here, and then we can look at them all together once I have all of the paints in there various boxes here so I'm not sure what this paper is it was just lying around it's not the greatest by the looks of it but at least we'll get an idea of what the color is on these two so that's nickel quinacridone gold and let's put some water down I think I get a bigger brush too this one's a bit flimsy and anthraquinone blue yeah, this, I don't know what's up with this paper, but it is soaking it in. Anyway, we get the idea. So I'll just put those to one side to dry, and then we'll swatch out this chart properly. I can't believe how full these are. M gram paint is not cheap, especially in Australia, so that's a lot of paint in there. That is going to last forever, I imagine. It is always you think it doesn't look that much in a, in a half pen but it really does go a long way especially when this as amazingly pigmented and saturated as M Graham paints so let's get painting I might add a bit of water to begin with I had to speed it up otherwise this video is just going to go on forever already it's very long but I started out with that bismuth yellow as you can see it's really really brightly colored it's also very opaque and going into the yellow ochre, here's another opaque one. I love this yellow ochre. Normally it's not one of my favorites to pick, which is why I didn't get it, but yeah, this one's surprisingly good, and so I may well end up buying a tube of it if I run out of that half pan. Going into the burnt umber, that's another really traditional color. It's a little bit more transparent and does take a bit more layering to get that nice dark color. I think I was just comparing it with the quinacridone rust there, <laughs> but we just keep moving on from that. Then I went in with the quinacridone red, which as I mentioned before, I've got the quinacridone rose already. This one is very, very transparent and it did take a little bit of wetting to get it to come out nice and strongly. And I did have to add a few layers on it. So that one was a bit more transparent. And here we come to Cobalt Violet, which can be an absolute nuisance to re-wet. But this one, as we are about to see, is really, really fantastic. And it's such a beautiful color. Look at the way it spreads. You could see me talking in the background. I just had to cut all of that because it was going to end up as about an hour of a video, which is far too long for all of us to watch. And you do earn extra points if you manage to get through this whole video which I think is 36 minutes in the end. Here's the Thalo Blue yellow shade, very standard Thalo Blue, not much to say about that one other than it's a good colour to have. I ended up with the red shade because I was unable to get the yellow shade on the day that I purchased my original set of them. Going into the Azo yellow or the Oriolan, that is such a fabulous, vibrant colour. I'm so happy that I've got some more yellows because there was really only one yellow when I went shopping. The Burnt Sienna is nice and transparent and quite red. Quinacridone Rust is maybe redder. It's just a really pleasant Sienna and it goes well with the Burnt Umber next to it. The Lamp Black is lovely and dark a very opaque black and is my favorite of all of the blacks you can get. I prefer it over ivory black which tends to be a bit warmer and more translucent. Then I have gone on to the quinacridone violet which is also a really really vibrant color and close to magenta, a little bit more purple but yeah another really pretty one and those three colors together look fabulous I think. Really lovely palette there. 
going into the ultramarine blue really vibrant easy to rewet I have no complaints with this one at all really lovely color and an excellent one to have in the palette cerulean blue is not one that I normally pick because it can be quite low tinting but this one had absolutely no problems rewetting and as you can see it's just as saturated as all the other colors if somewhat more muted which is natural for cerulean blue and lucky last is the sap green which is also really really pretty okay while I was waiting for everything to dry I've just gone through and circled all of the ones that I now have which is rather a lot I think I've got 29 half pans now not all of them have tubes obviously with them but I am so excited but we've got a couple of swatch cards here and this one's a bit of a mess because I don't know what's going on with this paper but never mind we get some idea so this is my entire collection of colors I have a lot of blues quite a few reds what four reds um, three yellows we'll say what four or five different no six in the earthy range including the black then we've got an orange I've got two greens three greens actually because that's hooker's green and then I've also got um, sort of three purpley ones that quinacridone violets really lovely love that cobalt violet so beautiful and my darks is in purple which is the first ever M Graham paint that I ever got so yeah it's interesting to see the quinacridone rose versus the quinacridone red if I just do that a little bit you can see they're, they're similar but this one is a bit more towards that magenta color I think what else have I got oh yes the phthalo blue red shade is quite a lot darker than the phthalo blue yellow shade although it's not written as yellow shade there the cerulean you can see is quite muted but it is quite lovely as well and that ultramarine is also really nice I cannot get over the granulation on that <laughs> that's just amazing and of course I just had my two extra quinacridone gold and the dark anthraquinone blue it's a few days later and I've had a chance to use these a little bit if I can work out how to open the box which side that side <laughs> they're really lovely colors that cobalt violet is magnificent I did one little painting while I was sitting outside in the garden we had a really nice sunny day and so I just sat out and did a sketch let me just open that up and I just did a really loose painting of some of the pansies that are in our garden I didn't draw this or anything I just basically painted it straight on but as you can see the amazing texture and granulation in that cobalt violet is absolutely beautiful it's my favorite it really is and this is a mix of quinacridone red and some of the azo yellow that's just the sap green on its own and then I just um, painted very lightly some of the cerulean blue in the background and then flicked all of the colors that I'd used onto it so that's how I made that piece I also had some inspiration in the middle of the night or at some inopportune time I'm sure when I always get my best ideas I was thinking about what to do with the palette because it's going to annoy me having them in two different palettes and this one the box doesn't have anywhere you can mix so this is just temporary housing at the moment but I was thinking of getting another box like this these ones are designed to hold 24 but they hold 26 this is my core palette they hold 26 in these two and they will actually take more of these in the middle so I was considering buying another one of these but I just really don't want to have to at the moment so what I thought I would do at least for the time being until such time as I end up buying a few more of these which will be further down the track I've got this heavy duty one that I took up to Brisbane last year for the sketch fest take out all of these because it's actually a mix of different brands of paint I've got Daniel Smith's and some Schmincke and I know why I've been sitting here pondering why there was one missing but then I realized that that's the one M Graham that I had in the dioxazine purple that is now over here so <laughs> that's a mystery solved but this will take 24 across here and then I can just magnetize the rest of them into here I think that works out at 29 paints which is how many I have and there will still be room for my little Neptune brush if I take out 
this if I need to. So I'm not too worried about the little sponge and brush situation because I'm not going to be traveling for a while. So I thought I might clean this palette up and move all of my M grams into here and then I've got some other small palettes that I might move these things into so this is going to be a future video probably in November I'm going to do this because I don't really want to have to paint another one of these right now and I thought this would be a fun video it's going to be quite a long one I think so yes stay tuned for that if you haven't already done so please subscribe so that you can see this video when it comes out in the future and I will get back with another small painting that I'm going to do today with these colors I thought I would use one of the cardi papers that was in the package because why not and I've not really used it before so I thought I'd just draw another little floral one but this time in a jug just to have something a little bit different other than just flowers on their own. Let's see if I can draw this and make it look somewhat like a vessel for holding flowers. <laughs> it's always a bit of a challenge drawing on paper without having done a draft first. Normally I would do a draft but it's such a small piece I just figure <laughs> I'll just jump in and do uh, drawing straight onto the paper itself. Try and make my geometric shapes look all right. I find it very hard to talk and draw at the same time, just so you know. <laughs> Which is why all of a sudden I go silent because I'm just concentrating fully on the drawing. Normally I can multitask with things, but yes, when I'm concentrating I need to not be talking. <laughs> Um, I think I'll just do some really loose blooms up here, nothing, you know, too specific, but really I'm just testing out the colours together. We'll just pretend they're like carnations or something. <laughs> Magical mystery flowers that aren't necessarily true to life with their colour either, but that's alright. That's the best thing about art, is you can just make it up, it doesn't always have to be a realistic piece. and we'll just do some greenery down there. All right, so there's my fantastic drawing. <laughs> and I'm just going to add some paints onto here. So I think I'm going to try and work just from here. I'm not sure if I want to use some of the cobalt turquoise, but I might add a little bit in there because the I really want to see what the violet and the turquoise look like together. Here we go, I've got a mini ceramic floral palette here that will do to mix the colours in. I have no idea what colours to do and maybe if I lift this up so we can actually see it, that would be great. <laughs> I might even just paint straight onto here without using the palette so much, that's what I tend to do. I know a lot of people mix their colours first but I just like to go straight from the half pan onto the paper. I'm thinking do I do the flowers first, so I might do a bit of a background and I think for the background I'll do a bit of cerulean, but I think I might want to add some cobalt turquoise in there. So we'll just add a little bit of both because I can. And I'm just going to get a second brush just so I can wet the paper a bit. Because I've never used Cardi paper and I'm not entirely sure how it's going to behave. But it seems to take water really well, just looking at that. So, and of course I've gone over the handle haven't I? <laughs> so I'll probably lose half of the handle in this but never mind that's all right just a quick demo oh wow that does run really well over the top of the paper so I might add the cerulean down the bottom just some patches and you could see where I haven't put water down it's much more heavily tinted all right and I think I really want some of this turquoise the cobalt turquoise is also one of my favorites from M Graham it's so beautiful I mean look at that color it's gorgeous and because I was thinking of adding some cobalt violet flowers I think the turquoise and the violet is so pretty together so I'll just quickly work around here and of course I've painted over the handle as I said I was going to <laughs> so I didn't disappoint there <laughs> very pretty
Yeah, I like that. I like the, the split tone is quite nice. Cerulean blue, as you can see, is a much deeper... Okay, I think the cerulean is a warmer blue, that's what I want to say, and the turquoise is much cooler. <laughs> okay, I'm going to leave the background. Now, I think I'm actually going to paint the flowers in while the background's wet, so that I can get a bit of running into it. I don't know if you could see Gandalf. Yes, I know you want attention, my dear. I might just have to come back because the cat's coming and he's just going to be in the paints and that's not a good idea. I'm going to see what the cobalt violet looks like next to the cobalt turquoise, so I'll paint this flower in. I didn't wet the paper here because I don't want it running too much. I'd rather just have a little bit of control and you can see it's bleeding into the cobalt turquoise there, which is totally cool because I just want to see what they do together as well. Ah, oh, this colour, I just can't get over how saturated it is and how easy it is to pick it up off the half band because some of the others I have are just impossible. And it's such a shame, although this colour looks different to my core cobalt turquoise, it really does. But I really, really like this one, so yeah. Hats off to M. Graham, they have got an absolutely beautiful pigment there. Alright, this is the quinacridone violet, which, oh my goodness, I think I picked up rather a lot there. Have I said how saturated these colours are? And look how they bleed together, they're really... These two colours are so nice with each other. Um, let's put one over here. Ooh, that's starting to dry that cobalt turquoise, so I'm not getting so much feathering now, but that's alright, I just kind of wanted it up there a little bit. Alright, what other colours have I got that we can add in here? Um, I think I'll stick with the blues and I'll maybe put a bit of this quinacridone red. Although this one is not quite as pink as perhaps these ones are, but... And I've noticed this uh, with this one, it doesn't seem to be quite as saturated as the quinacridone rose. <laughs> oh dear, that one has bled a bit further than I was expecting and that doesn't really go on with the turquoise very well. Never mind, we'll keep going. I like this paper though. I shouldn't be putting my finger on it because it's just leaching oils in. Oopsies. Let's just kind of blend it in a bit with that. I think a bit of ultramarine blue because this is a warmer blue. I think we'll do this one. This ultramarine is really beautiful. It's one of those colors that's so pretty and it's a very sort of generic colour to have, it's very common, ultramarine's been around for a very very long time in various forms and it's very popular with artists and there's, there's a reason why and uh oh, <laughs> the paper's spent a little bit because I put the water on and now that's just running off into the distance but I'm just going to leave it today and I'm going to do one phthalo blue one just because it's right there, oh that's pretty and I will have to sort that background out. This is why normally you probably want to let the background dry first, but uh, today I'm just figured I would just let the colours run because sometimes that's really fun too and it kind of gives a really cool effect. I'm actually going to leave it. I'm not even going to touch anything today. I'm just going to let it organically do its thing, although I might just add a tiny bit more cobalt turquoise up here because it's gone quite dry and I think I just want to let that bleed in a little more. <laughs> Have I ruined it? You can pretend the cobalt turquoise is one of the flowers and it's uh, bloomed out into the background. That's what we're going to do. I think that that's one of my favorite things about watercolors is that they are quite unpredictable sometimes and I mean you can control them to do what you want. Don't get me wrong but it's more fun sometimes just to let them go and let them sit, you know, just do what they want and run into each other and make a, a lovely mess. So we'll pretend like there's a shadow going across that way. So I guess the light's going to be over here. Although, I mean, the, the flowers are just whatever colour. So we, we're not worried too much about values on that today. Doesn't really matter. I just wanted to add some pretty colours. I mean, their colours are absolutely gorgeous. If you have not tried M. Graham paints, I would highly recommend them if you can get your hands on them. Can I flick water on, do you think? Flick some paint on. 
or is that just going to make a horrible mess? I'm going to just try a little bit with the cobalt violet because this is the star of the show. <laughs> uh, it's a bit tiny to flick it on, but I'll try. Uh, I'm, good. I'm getting it literally everywhere but on the background where I wanted it. At least with watercolour paints you can wipe it off the, um, the backdrop like that. This backdrop is so dirty by the way and I can't get to a shop to buy another one so I'm thinking I might have to paint over this one or do something with it but I'm not entirely sure so I'm a bit stuck until shops open up again. Oh, that's lovely. We've got some lovely speckles on the vase. I think I'm just going to let this dry for a moment before I paint the vase. Actually, one other thing I can do, I've just realised, is I forgot to add in the foliage. So let's quickly do that with some of this sap green. Now, of course, you can mix all of these colours, but I just really wanted to use them in their pure form because quite often... I'll admit to doing this, I don't actually mix a lot of colours, I just like to use colours in their pure form because then they're just not muddy at all. Although I mean I will mix things together, it's not like I won't, but just when I'm when I'm testing them out especially, I just like to paint them as they are. And the sap green's really pretty too. There's <laughs> some foliage, that blue's just disappeared completely. So maybe if I just add a tiny bit of green, just to separate it from the background, that will help. Yeah, I'm liking this cardi paper, it's really pretty. Um, it, it feels nice, although I think it would probably be ideal to tape it down. <laughs> but I'm not a big fan of taping down paper. I just like to kind of paint it and leave it with a nice messy edge rather than having a perfect edge. So this is pretty much exactly how I treat watercolour paper for the most part. And I'm just going to add a little bit more. So once I start, it's very hard to stop. I'm sure other people had this issue too. Thalo Blue has just totally blended out. So I'm just going to add a tiny bit of extra blue to give it a bit more pop. All right. I might do that with the... <laughs> Every time I think I'm done, I keep seeing other things which need fixing. <laughs> This video is much longer than I was intending it to be, but sometimes I just like sitting down and talking into the camera and playing around with paints, so that's what this one's ended up being. And now, of course, I've done that with all of them. The others are all needed as well, so I guess we'll just do that with everything. We can add a little bit of ultramarine into that cobalt violet, so there we go. I don't know what happened up here. some violet in there and just a little bit of the quinacridone violet yeah I'm really happy with these colors they are excellent there we go I think that's good I'm not going to touch that one anymore is that background dry not really but you know what I'm just going to keep going I thought I would add a tiny bit of the black as the color for here so it's a, just a really oh, a tiny bit of the black oh right I'll use the palette because <laughs> it's really dark even though that background is still wet I'm just going to add it in I'm super gentle I can leave just a tiny bit of a, a line there although that little mark is bothering me <laughs> but let's just add some in and since the light's coming from over here we'll fade it out just do that so we get rid of that pencil mark we can have a few dots we can pretend that's part of the vase's decoration <laughs> and the pattern on the vase uh, and I'll just add a tiny bit more dark to the inside so we can see that's where the shadow is coming from and a tiny bit on the handle just to define it a bit because I've lost half of it in the background this is where you could use a pen to of course line things or highlight them but I'm just going to leave it as it is today because sometimes I just like to have a nice little abstract piece 
it doesn't have to be perfect you can kind of see it's a vase so <laughs> that's the main thing um, can I just yes good that's still wet I'll just blend that in just a tiny bit and I think it still looks a bit like it's floating so I'm just going to add a tiny bit of black into the blue down here just to give it more of a uh oh shadow definition <laughs> I've got some leakage going on there we go I'll just that looks better now it's grounded it really bothers me when things aren't grounded you know you need to add a shadow to an object otherwise it just looks like it's floating in midair and that just doesn't look right so yeah always add something that's darker underneath whether it's black or just a darker shade of whatever color it is you're using I actually quite like that I'm just going to leave that as it is the rest I'll leave um, you know fairly linear that's the word I want all right I'm going to call this piece done I'm not going to mess with it anymore but I really love this paper and the paints are just wonderful I hope you've enjoyed today's little impromptu video I had a really good time painting on this little paper so I'm going to have to think of some other mini paintings to do thank you so much Lindell for sending me these things I just can't believe how generous you are with the amount of paints that you sent because M Graham paints especially in Australia are not cheap and I am forever grateful that you have pretty much doubled my set of M Graham colors so I am going to do that future video stay tuned for that I hope you're all having a fantastic day and I will see you all again really soon swatch you later bye